Boxing King Media in association with Box Road. Delighted to be joined by the Spice Boy. I hate saying Spice Boy. I just thought about it because he's like 40 odd years old. I don't say how old you are, but I bet it's, it makes you cringe, doesn't it, when you get introduced as a Spice Boy now? It does. It does, absolutely. And can I just say, alhamdulillah, that you're here today. Uh, great to see you. Um, I know, you know, you've been through, um, of, of, of we just spoke about off camera, and it's great to see you here today. I'm glad you're interviewing me today. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure, Ryan. You're one of my, uh, in fact, you're probably one of my introductions into boxing. People, a lot of people always ask me, who did I, if I ever been in the gym, have I ever fought anyone? In fact, funnily enough, Ryan Rhodes was the first person I ever sparred about 15 years ago. <laughs> I think you battered me actually that day as well. <laughs> I had an off day though, I had an off day. Yeah, back in the day at the Coldwell gym. Yeah. Um, Ryan, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, interesting fight week coming up, uh, but before we get to the fight week, I've, uh, I just want to initially speak to you about the incident yesterday with John Fury we saw at the press conference. Absolutely crazy scenes. Uh, for some context, John Fury warned everyone keep it about boxing, keep talking about fighting. Twice, he did it twice. Nobody, nobody listened. Nobody, nobody listened. If you don't listen to John Fury, look what happens. Um, I was a little bit like, did it need to go that far? Because we didn't really listen to the fighters. We didn't, un we didn't listen to what they wanted to talk about each other to and, 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 and get off their chest what they wanted to say. Before you knew it, John went on one. He absolutely flipped. But he did warn the people that um, Jake Paul and, and obviously his opponent, sorry, uh, Logan Paul and his, uh, his opponent that let's, let's keep it real, let's keep it about boxing. We're here to talk about fighting. We're here to, talk, we're here to have the fight up. They didn't listen. And if you don't listen to John Fury, that's what happens. Um, the tables went up, cake was flying around and everything, it was, it, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was it were a mad, mad press conference. It's, people got two opinions on it. Obviously, some people are saying, oh, it's, it's putting boxing in the gutter, but some people find it funny because the whole thing of Misfits is it's more entertainment than boxing. Uh, what did you make of it? And especially to the people that are, like, you know, mega against it. I think Misfits is, is not professional boxing. Misfits is... Uh, YouTube boxing, it's, it's not professional boxing. Tommy Fury is a professional boxer, but he's hit the jackpot in, in what he's doing. Um, estimated big money, what he's getting. When he fought uh, Jake Paul, now he's fighting KSI. He's, he's hit the jackpot. He's a fighter, professional fighter, fighting YouTubers and getting paid massive, massive amounts of money. So you can't blame him. Who, who wouldn't not do that in his shoes? Everybody would do it. Um, yeah, a little bit distasteful, but listen, it's entertainment. That side of the, of the boxing misfits is about entertaining the crowd, entertaining the public, um, and that's what they did. Um, I've not seen many press conferences like that unless Derek Chisora is about as well, flipping tables and chucking tables, but it, it's... You know, some people don't like that. I'm not a fan of it, um, but people do. Some people do like that as well. My personal favourite part was when he said to Logan Paul, "Get rid of that cake or I'm gonna shove it up your ass." Uh, what was your favourite bit? You know, I seen I seen uh, Logan had the head, and he was, and I'm thinking the camera you couldn't see who was at that other, the other side of the of the stage, and I'm thinking if he chucks that bit of cake and it goes on John Fury, get ready, you're going to have to run off that stage as fast as you can. But he launched it um, at his opponent, but luckily it didn't hit John Fury, it didn't hit Tommy, so there was no, there was no, um, there was no, uh, I seen a few chairs getting picked up as well, even the chairs getting picked up, it was, I know Logan Paul's in, in WWE and, and it was starting to get that way, but um, there was so many parts of it, I was just, I had my head in my hands, just cringing, thinking this is mental. Well, uh, John, in the last few minutes, has actually just put an apology out for his language yesterday. But like I said, there's two ways of looking at it. But, uh, but thank you for your opinion on that. 
Um, before we get to this uh, fight week, Ryan, I just want to talk about uh, the big show you had recently uh, and also the one that you've got coming up at the Magna again, I believe it is. You know, yeah. you, you and Steffi Bull doing some great bits together in yeah. Sheffield. I think last time we spoke, you know, we did a brilliant interview here with Perry Howe and uh, your guy, Ricky Reeves. Ricky Reeves yeah. yeah, turned out to be a great fight. Ricky won on points. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the show is what we're putting on. It's giving opportunities to fighters that don't think they're... That, that basically might not have thought that we're going to get an opportunity. Ricky came to me uh, through lockdown and said, I just want to fight. I just want to turn professional. I've had five amateur fights. I've won all five. I just want to see how far I can get. He said, uh, if there was any, ever an opportunity to get me on Sky, on um, The Zone, uh, on a big platform TV channel, on BT, please get me that opportunity. And if I ever got the chance to fight for an area title, then get me that get me that opportunity. He's done them all. He fought on Sky in the um, in the um, box uh, the the prize fighter tournament. Um, what what Sky did. He won his central area title fight, his last fight. So he's done it all. Now it's onwards and upwards to see how far Ricky Reeves can get. Um, we're giving opportunities to young fighters, local fighters. Um, getting on good shows, we try and give them the best experience. Um, the Magna, which the venue we use, is a great venue. The ring entrance, the glitz, the glam, the, the lights, the ring girls, everything. Uh, we just try and give our fighters the best opportunities um, locally, and then hopefully we can get them on so, onto some big platform channels. The Magna is definitely one of the most underrated venues in the country. Um, like it you is. said, it's dark and you can put on some brilliant productions yeah. in there. Uh, what, what uh, your next show is? Any fighters we can keep an eye out for? Obviously, uh, just quick touch up on the main event as well. Yeah, so Louis Sylvester, uh, Jimmy First, a great English title fight. Um, the amount of tickets just them two fighters have sold is just unreal, crazy. Jimmy's a walking miracle. He's 40 plus and he can fight. Oh, mate, it, 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 that's why this fight's going to be an exciting fight, an entertaining fight. Uh, I'm so looking forward to this fight. Um, like I said, both fighters have, have, have ordered crazy amount of tickets. Um, myself and Steffi uh, was, was on uh, WhatsApp last night talking about ticket sales. The tickets we've, we've, we've had uh, created for this fight everyone has gone out so basically if the fighters do what 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 they've said and what they've ordered this fight this show is going to be a sellout and we've still got 10 weeks to uh, nine weeks to go it's crazy we've got some amazing ticket sellers uh, on the fight jimmy jimmy joe is defending his central area title fight in a great fight uh subia mohammed from from the ingle gym from here we've got huey wilson a uh, local lad from Doncaster, uh, Ricky Reeves is, is is going to be on the on the show as well. We've got a stacked card. We've got 12 fights lined up, um, and this is probably one of the biggest fights we've done, apart from when we did Terry Hopper uh, fight for the IBO World Title fight. So that's how good this card is. Um, good local fighters um, showing their t showcasing their talent. Definitely. So I've seen Ricky fight, you know, obviously on TV and in person. Great fighter and he can talk as well. And Subi also, big, big puncher. Definitely yeah. want to watch out in the future. Um, and uh, just moving on, is there anything else you want to add about your events? No, I just think, you know, come and support local fighters. This is what we need. We, we Small hole promoters really do um, struggle to put events on. It's it's not easy. We do need support from... from um, uh, from people coming to support their local fighters and you know even if you want a good night out it's a proper entertaining night it's not just you know a boxing night it's an event we try and put on uh, great entertainment great great fights good 50 50 fights or as close to that as possible so just come and support us and come and support the local fighters yeah and i'll further add to that it's always worth uh supporting these young lads from the start rather than jumping on the bandwagon when they're fighting on TV because then you're not really seen as a true, true fan. Mm -hmm. They still appreciate the sport, but it's better when you start the journey from, from, from the start. So give, give them the sport. Um, big fight week uh, this week at Usyk Dubois. So uh, 
Uh, I spoke to Dominic Ingall earlier, Ryan. I've got to get your opinion on it. Most people have got Usyk a huge favourite. A lot of people are talking about Dubois' age, young, you know, the fact that he's younger, fresher, done more rounds. Uh, just sum it up, how, how does that fight go? I just feel that Usyk is just an unbelievable talent. I think he's a great, a great, um, great fighter. Cruiserweight uh, world champion, undisputed cruiserweight champion, moved up to fight. Um, Fight for the world t world title at heavyweight against Anthony Joshua. Beat Anthony Joshua twice. I can only see one winner. You know, we all know that Daniel Dubois can punch, um, and he's got that. He's got that get out of jail card. That that one punch knockout where he can turn fights around in an instant. But I just don't think that he'll he'll land that one shot on uh, on Usyk. I think he's a great boxer. He's got great movement, head movement, great reflexes. He's got it all in abundance. Um, so I just feel Usyk's gonna gonna dominate the fight um, and maybe get a late stoppage. I can really see him getting a late stop stoppage on Daniel Dubois. Good stuff. And on the undercard, Ryan, uh, a bit of a historical moment. Um, in the words of Nazi Mohammed, where he said uh, the other day, he said everyone's watched. Ricky Hatton's son, they watch Conor Ben's son, they watch uh, Eubank's son, but everyone's been waiting for the Prince's sons to make their debut. Did you expect anything else apart from an unbelievable uh, show to fight on for one of Naz's sons to fight on? I didn't. I didn't. And do you know what? Fair play to him. Um, I think it's unfair that, you know, that he'll probably get... Um, um, compared to, to such as Naz. I mean, when me and Naz were fighting, I always used to get compared, and probably until I won my British title, I always used to get compared to Naz. But when you train together from six years old, he was a couple of years older than me, all the way through the amateurs. We, he won, he won um, the English schoolboys national title. I won it on the same day. I was 14, he was 16. We, 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 I got compared all the way through, through my career, up until I probably won the British title. And I think it's unfair for Adam to get uh, compared to, to Naz at such an early, early stage of his career. Let's see what he's got. Let's see how flamboyant he is. Let's see, because he can talk. I've seen him doing interviews. He really can talk, the kid. And he's only just starting out. So imagine in the next couple of years what he's going to be like talking, what he's going to be like fighting. But I can't wait to see him. I'm so proud of... of of him turning professional, and I'm so proud of him fighting on a, an amazing card for his first fight. I spoke to Dom about this as well, you know, the, the pressure that he's carrying. I think a lot, because he, he's kind of blatantly said, you know, don't compare me to my dad, don't expect my dad. This is Adam Hamid. There's never going to be another Naz. Yeah. Uh, there's only ever been one. So he's been quite uh, blunt about that. Yeah. Um, but as I said to Dom earlier, you know, with regards to the event, kid must have some balls to be willing because he's accepted this fight to debut co-main event 40 plus thousand people he's Naz's son no matter what he says everyone's just automatically going to be thinking we're going to see a flashy ring entrance yeah. leopard skin flipping over there all that that's what everyone's expecting but that's not what they're going to get we're going to expect Adam Hammond and we're going to find out what it is on Saturday we are going to see you know I mean when 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 Adam and Sammy lived in Sheffield um, I think just through lockdown I used to come to my gym every now and again and have a session in here. So I only used to see him on the bags or, or, or a little bit on the pads when I used to take him on the pads. So I didn't really see that much of him. I never saw him spar. Um, but listen, for him to agree to fight on this card, for him to be confident enough to fight on this kind of card, it only runs in the blood. It only runs in the bloodline and that's where, that's where it's come from. Naz... Um, like I said, mate, it, it, just, it just suits having your professional debut on a big cog like this in Poland, on a pay-per-view event. I just can't wait. I just can't wait to see the next generation, the next generation of the Prince, to see what, see what level uh, Adam is and to see how good he is, see what he's got, see what the future brings for him. It's going to be a great car. It's going to be a great night of boxing. And just a quick link, I'm right in saying it was uh, Naz that gave you the name Spice Boy, wasn't it? I'm right no, in saying no, that no, no, it was John Ingle. Oh, was it the uh, yeah, flip it over the ropes? Ingle. I can't remember. Yeah, I, something... I taught Naz the flip over the ropes, yeah. 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 So yeah. me and Naz used to practice it day in, day out, day in, day out. But I didn't have the confidence to do it 
when I was fighting. Naz, that was Naz's that was Naz's ring entrance. That flip over the top rope. Um, but listen, to have that kind of confidence in front of thousands and thousands of people and millions and millions watching it on TV to jump that top rope to have that have that audacity to flip that top rope and land land in that centre of the ring with the crowd going crazy. I just wonder what 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 Adam's going to be doing in the. Uh, in his ring entrance, I just expect something flashy, something stylistically amazing, and I can't wait. Definitely so. Um, that's pretty much it, Ryan. Uh, is there anything else you're looking forward to you want to talk about? No, just, um, you know, it's a little bit... Um, boxing's on a high at the minute. You know, I think boxing's in a great place at the minute. Apart from, obviously, we've we've seen a lot of the... A lot of... Um, drug tests coming back, which are, which is obviously putting a cloud over boxing, but we've just got to try and cap this off and, and make sure that when fighters do get get caught, tested, there needs to be more of a punishment. There needs to be something where where fighters may be thinking about it, then, but then think about the consequences and then don't, don't even think about doing it. It needs to be, it needs to be where maybe fighters' purses maybe fines, things like that. Maybe the coaches need to be penalised as well. But something needs to be more, it needs to be, the fight needs to be held accountable more than what they're doing because there's no really consequences apart from getting a ban, a two-year ban, three-year ban, four-year ban, whatever it is. It needs to be where fighters, even if it enters their head, they think the consequences are no, no. So we just need to we need to get this sorted ASAP. Just out of curiosity, uh, Ryan, do you remember how many times in your career you was tested? I'm just curious to what it was like so back yeah, in the days. So yeah, after every title fight, I was tested, uh, but then probably for the last two years, I was randomly tested for the Canelo fight. I was randomly tested in that in that 10 weeks build up probably twice or three times where I turned up to my house and I had a guy waiting outside my house uh, who wanted to test me. Uh, but basically that was only probably the last two years where I was randomly tested, the last two years. Previously to that, I was only tested after my title fights. That was it. Interesting. And that Canelo fight was was he? Did you both sign some sort of deal where you you paid for it? Yeah, from your I believe. Person? I believe. Yeah, I believe. Uh, Golden Boy paid for for random random testing on that fight. Um, yeah, so I think it was two or three times I got randomly tested. Obviously, I got tested after the fight with Canelo, um, but yeah, a couple of times I turned up to my house and I had a guy waiting out outside my house waiting to test me. Good stuff, well, Ryan Rhodes. It's been a pleasure. Uh, it's been great catching up with you, and uh, all the best with the show that's coming up. Again, if anyone wants to buy tickets for that, contact yourself direct or the fighters all on the, the fighters, card. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, thank you very much. Great to see you as always.